let's get into this question from Juan because I know he's trying to say it. Yeah. Um, how can you tell if REW measurement is good enough for the room and how to tell if that measurement is the best the room can influence? And uh, here it is again in a different form. How can I tell if my measurements are the best the room can do? I don't know. Oh, I see. So you're trying to optimize, basically. Like, are, is okay. this the best I can make my speaker sound? Was, yeah, probably. I think that's that's kind of like, like. How do you know that you're not boosting it too, boosting the bass too much or too little? Right. I think that's kind of where you're at. Aaron, you've yeah. been quiet. What, what's up, man? What do you What do you got for this guy? You're You're an oh, EQ man. master. That's that's a uh i feel like that's a conversation that would that could take some time like if you really want to get into it you know like so i don't even know where to start man rocker says to take so multiple measurements in more than one spot yeah so that's that's certainly one thing is he doing this all manually himself like is he eqing himself has he got like direct direct however you guys want to pronounce it you know like I guess more details would be would be helpful. Tell them to call in, dude. Pick up the phone. Yeah. Throw that number I, up there. Call you know, in. Funny. Yeah. I feel like if I uh, if somebody just listened to all the different daily hi fi's, they'd be able to figure out like my magical beans. Like probably, I, you know, I give like a little snippet here and there. I mean, how you even do things. Dan was asking, "What are Joe's settings?" So what are they, Dan, you can't Dan, if you don't know, Joe's doing like a remote in home manual calibration. And so I, I've been calling it Joe's magic bean settings because they're just magic. Just work their magic. He works the magic. It took like five hours. This last one took five hours, right, Joe? Yeah. I think, yeah. Um, I mean, I want to answer this this guy's question. You know, so Juan, I'll, I think the best thing that you can do is, you know, there you go. have the best possible speakers, right? Right. If you have very good speakers, your room is going to do whatever it's going to do. Um, but having good speakers is still going to be better than having less good speakers. <laughs> and so maybe with DSP, maybe what you want to try to do is maybe try to optimize your speaker, right? Forget the room for a second, because I know it's called room correction and it is to a certain extent, but for the most part, when you think about like the upper frequencies, you are doing speaker correction. You're trying to fix any issues with a speaker that are fixable where it becomes room EQ kind of is in the bass frequencies where the speaker and the room are pretty much the same. Like they're all, they work together. You can't separate them out. And so that you're, you're still fixing the speaker, but it's the speaker and the room. So I would say the best sound you can get is to, to have a target curve. That's most similar to the natural response of excellent speakers in your room. Is that right? No, no, that's not right. Uh, the best target curve would be one where it kind of follows the natural response of your speakers in your room, um, except with, you know, with the rest of the, the speaker EQ'd so that they sound as good as possible. <laughs> Hopefully that helps. I know it's a little bit complicated. No, I, I think, yeah. So what you're saying is absolutely, that's why I'm saying this could be a longer conversation. Like people want, and I'm not talking about one, but I think people in general think sometimes that these things are simple and they can be if you, if you like want to leave out a lot of the, the information that's useful, but the information that's useful is important to understand. Right. So that's one clear aspect is understanding your speaker. Croissant said it perfectly. You know, if you know what your speaker's doing before you put it in the room, that's a big help then you know what you can and cannot fix with that speaker. And then there's the aspect of fixing the speaker. So speaker correction. And then there's the aspect of trying to fix the room via DSP, you know, so whatever you can't do passive measurements or passive methods like um, absorption panels and base traps and stuff like that, or multiple subwoofers throughout the room. I mean, there's all sorts of tactics. That's why I'm saying, you know, like if you're doing this manually with a mini DSP, then I think something like REW, to help you time align, make sure everything's time align. So with the IR, uh, check your step response to make sure there's good handoff between your speakers and your subwoofers. Um, level matching, those are all pretty basic things to do with mini DSP, right? But then I don't know if one also knows how to effectively use equalization, right? To know what to look for to EQ and not, because if you have a loopback measurement, you can do minimum phase measurements, and that will show you where there's something in the room that you can't fix 
versus something that you can fix. So if there's a minimum phase uh, spike, you know, basically like a uh, a phase issue in the room response or the speaker response itself, then you can't fix that, right? Unless you physically move the speaker or you put another speaker somewhere else to help cancel that or boost that, right? So it's all about give and take. And then somebody else mentioned measuring in different places. That's another thing. Are you talking about just the primary listening position? Or are you talking about a good average over multiple seats? And then that's certainly a give and take. So there's there's a lot of little yeah. caveats here that kind of goes into what you're trying to get. He sa- he says his speakers are SVS primes. So. It's a good speaker to start with, I'd say. Yeah, I mean, it so, probably is. There you go. Yeah, they, they measure they those measure pretty well. And right, so you're starting off with a, a good speaker. I've actually DSP'd an entire system that was all pretty much SVS prime and elevation speakers. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, they they measure well. So I think the ideal. Let's just say. If you wanted to think about it like this, a studio monitor like these Cali Audio uh, LP6 or LP8 V2s, whatever, any of the Cali Audio stuff, they have DSP built in them into them to make them measure very well. But they're also designed well, right? Uh, so off-axis response is good on them, and they add the DSP to make sure that the frequency response is as, you know, it, it's excellent, right? I'd say it's excellent, especially for the price. So you take that speaker. And if you were to put it into a room and add a sub, that you're getting close to like an ideal. You're you're getting close to ideal. It's just that the bass is gonna get screwed up no matter what speaker you have, right? right. And that's, that's when you due need to your room. EQ. Yeah. yeah. So you need the EQ for that part. That's it. I that's mean, you it. could you could just take a, a measurement from your main listening position and check it out and be like, okay, email email us at info at dailyhifi.com and be like, this is the measurement I'm getting from my room and then or at my main listening position like is this okay i think i think maybe that's what he means like is this me- what does this yeah. mean is, is, well, is, the does target- it, is this okay does it sound would this sound good like if that's yeah yeah right yeah i think yeah. that's mainly like what he's what he's asking like what does it look like so maybe so, next time we can have some we hey joe you should get fresh hater jay to draw some be uh, like this know. this looks good this is bad like this yeah. would have no bass. This has crappy treble and really high highs. Maybe I'll do a, a live. Don't maybe I'll do a live in one for a the summer. Yeah, live, a live yeah, one live where stream. somebody will like, hey, you know, let's do one right now. We'll just do two speakers. Do a yeah, that might be fun. Yeah, I don't know. We'll yeah. yeah, but but key thing is you don't want flat in room because I see a lot of people mistaking flat in room versus flat in a coat. So without a room, right? But as soon as you put a speaker in a room, it, it gets reinforcement from all the boundaries, like all the side walls, the rear walls. So all those sound waves bounce off the sound that's already coming at you directly from the speaker. And if it measures flat in a room, it's almost guaranteed to sound way too hot. So make sure that you understand that first and foremost, because a lot of people I see on ABS forum will say, you know, well, I measured it flat in room and I don't like it. I'm like, well, yeah, no shit. So <laughs> pardon my French, but uh, no, like, I, I totally yeah, do. I mean. Yeah, of course they don't. And look, look, yeah, actually, Joe, I was going to bring this up to you. Maybe you should do a magic you know, giveaway, giveaway for somebody. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'll do it. Yeah, yeah. Hey, that's a good. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a good idea. I'll do it for yeah. somebody.